What we have here is a Nernst lamp. And this is actually a very interesting type of incandescent lamp. And it was invented by Walther Nernst in 1897. And uh, it was produced probably till 1910 or 1915, somewhere in that range. And uh, what it is, how it works is really neat. It's, it's an incandescent source that doesn't require vacuum. It runs directly in air. Ah! And on the table here, we, we have one to show the insides of it, as well as some that are assembled all here. This one's missing the glower, but this one's assembled. This one has a globe on it. The basic operation of the lamp is, it's a little more complex than a standard incandescent, obviously, but it's still the same basic principle. Here we have what's left of what was the glower. And it's made of porcelain on the back, and it's got these two strips here. And what these actually are, are heater coils made out of German silver wire with, with, with uh, a ceramic oxide over the top. And then running across the middle, which is gone now, was a little thin white, looked like a filament. And it was made of an oxide material, and that's the glower. That's what actually produces the light. And how the lamp works is when the current is switched on, the glower will not conduct electricity when it's cold because it's an oxide. It has to be heated before it'll conduct electricity. So the heater would turn on and glow red and heat up this little glower until it reached a temperature where, where it would conduct electricity. Then the glower would start to conduct and it would become incandescent and produce a bright white light, pretty much like a a modern tungsten filament light bulb does. And as soon as the, the glower was glowing, the heater was no longer necessary. In fact, if the heater kept operating, it would damage the glower. So that's where the shifter comes in. It's a type of a relay that when the resistance of the glower changes, the coil senses it because it's in series and it automatically switches the heater off as long as the glower is lit and then the lamp just continues to glow. There were two types of shifters used in these, I believe. One type was magnetic, and it worked like, like an electromagnetic coil, and the other type was a thermal one, and this one appears to be the thermal one, and they, they used basically an early form of bimetallic element in there, so when it heats up, it expands, and the contacts would open. So all this was was a, sh a series resistance and series with the lamp the Nernst glower, so that when the glower starts, this would shut the heater coils off so that it wouldn't so that it wouldn't uh, burn up the heater coils because the combined heat of, of the glower and the heater coils together would overheat the heater coils and burn them out quickly. It would also reduce the life of the glower. So they switched off the, the heater coils once the glower was in operation so that you wouldn't reduce the life of either component. But what's amazing is that the glower being made out of an oxide, it can't burn anyway because it's already an oxide. It's already oxidized. So it can run directly in the air with, without a vacuum, ah! which is very interesting for an incandescent lamp. And it's the only incandescent lamp that I know of that could run directly in the air. Because of its operating principle, because it's an oxide that conducts electricity, it has a negative current characteristic. That is, it'll draw more and more current until it destroys itself. So that's where the ballast comes in, which is iron wire sealed in a vacuum. And the iron wire is just a resistance, just a resistor to prevent the glower from drawing more current than a specified value. And what it is is, is fine iron wire, pure iron wire wound on, on, a, on a structure inside made of ceramic discs with a center support wire. And interestingly, the, uh, the ballast is, is in a vacuum. Well, they, they evacuate the bulb, but then they fill it with hydrogen gas as a fill gas. And that keeps, that keeps the iron wire from oxidizing at all. Because if it were exposed to air or if there was any residual gases inside there that contain oxygen, it would, it would rust the wire quickly. So they put hydrogen gas in there to protect the iron wire. And so it doesn't overheat, it keeps it running cool. The wire should never get red hot. If it does, it's, it'll burn itself out. On a footnote, if the heater coils failed to work, 
because of a bad shifter or a burned out coil, you could actually take the globe off the fixture, turn on the current, and light it with a match like a gas light. Just run a match back and forth across the glower and it would heat it up, heat it up enough for it to work. So even if the heater stopped working, you could still use the Nernst lamp. It was pretty efficient for its day. It was, it was brilliant engineering and it's probably one of my favorite light sources.